In 50 years, I think that cars will become mobility units. They'll be linked to an overall network of control. You can make traffic much more efficient if each car knows what all the other cars are doing, which is exactly what they're in, in progress doing right now. Well, my name is Sid Mead, and I've designed a lot of things that are considered ways to get from A to B. Automobiles, yachts, airplane interiors, uh, trains, buses, uh, sort of interesting non-automotive mobility ideas. And it's been, a, it's been an exciting ride for the last 50 some years since I left Ford Motor Company. The challenge of designing automobiles is you have to be able to be two or three people all at once. You have to have, have confidence in your decisions, in your uh, sensibilities. So you have to be able to stand off sides, sort of like off stage, and watch yourself designing. Now it's a mind trick, and I think it, it makes it uh, much more valid because you're not jumping to the solution the first time out. You're giving yourself time to think, and that way you come up with, with new ideas. If you stop too soon in the process, you're robbing yourself of, of choice of all the things you've thought of. I was trying to think of a mobility idea that was one person footprint. So you could be in a crowd and then suddenly have your own mobility uh, capability right away. And so I came up with wheel pants. They're sort of like an exoskeleton. And the gyros in the small of your back, so you don't have to worry about balance. And the wheels are at your ankles, and you can rotate them down so you can sort of skate but you don't have to worry about balance. And you literally could then walk around if you put the wheels up alongside of the outside of your calves. And this is illustrated in the rendering that I did of the 200th running of the Kentucky Derby. The whole idea of designing vehicles for movies, you're helping the director illustrate the story, which has a social and a technological setting. And you have to be aware of that because you don't want to jar the story. It, it has to be consistent. And that's what I think makes the vehicles and the, the story of Blade Runner so iconic and durable because it never violates its own technological format. And you have to essentially illustrate the story just like you do for real life. I have never thought of my designs as being isolated. They're always embedded into a social use environment. I think that's critical. Well, the car I wish I had designed, and at the time, it was my first luxury car to purchase, a 61 Cadillac Coupe de Ville. It's beautifully proportioned, and the fact that it had this, what they called a skag fin down the side, gave it this floating uh, linear quality. The 61 Cadillac Coupe de Ville was, was an elite, exotic automobile. I wish I'd worked on that. There's one car, that I'm glad I had nothing to do with, and it was the Pontiac Division Aztec. Now the original idea was to make this sort of the Swiss army knife of automobiles. It could be used in camping and drive around the city and so forth. It is an astonishingly awful, awful vehicle. Functionally, perhaps, but the appearance of it is, is astoundingly bad. I'm so glad I had nothing to do with it. The advice that I would give of those, you know, much younger than I am, just entering the whole field of design, and more specifically automotive or mobility design, and I think that's what it will be called eventually. Automobiles will become sort of a, an antique reference. But I think you have to remember everything you see. You have to fill your mind and have your own catalog of, of of triggers and everything from nature, natural shapes and forms and colorations and, and logic to mechanicalness in that, in that odd uh, uh, link to just natural reality. And I think you have to be able to, to pay attention to the technical aspect, but inside the boundary of imaginative uh, invention. If you can successfully invent your way around the problem, you've won the game.